What's going on guys and welcome back to another Satisfactory video where last time we got a bunch of stuff done such as extended our coal power plant, doubled our copper production, created a cool little intersection that combines our copper wire, our limestone, cable and copper sheets. But also we got these machines down on the top floor to create quick wire, steel rotors, stators, mortars, automated wiring, and yes, versatile framework. They all go into the sandwich layer underneath, which creates this network, makes its way down the lifts, and then joins forces with all the rest of the belts that this whole building is producing for the sole purpose to go into our central storage. But in today's video, I think it's about time we leave the boundaries of the desert and head to this location right here to start our oil production, which will look something like this. And if we want to get to the other base, we just take the express route. <laughs> yep, we got hyper cannons, baby. And then we can just land safely just outside our base, either go inside or even take another hyper cannon. But you must be wondering how we got all that done. So let me take you back. <laughs> Okay, so the first thing I want to crack on with today is I think I want to bring the space elevator to the main base. So I think I want to extend this foundation here a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, and then bring the elevator in. But also, if you're enjoying the videos, remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just an emoji. You know how we do it, right? I don't know why I did that. That was a little bit cheesy, wasn't it? Using <laughs> using a goddamn emote. Oh, yeah. Ignore me. Ignore me. I'm a little bit weird. But who isn't? This building is just too majestic. Just look at it. It's too bloody. Oh my god, and there it is. It is happening. I love this building. This building, it has to be my favorite building in Satisfactory. So without further ado, let's unlock the next tiers. But I have to admit something. I did a little bit of a dum-dum. Um, as you know, we built versatile framework and uh, automated wiring, but I've not been automating smart plating. And that's because this facility right here, the very first starter base we actually started doing, I've actually shut down. And because I started removing some of this because it's a bit of an eyesore, I added the sinks in here to empty all the storage because we was making everything over there anyway. And then I come to realize, I was like, wait, I have no smart plating. But oh boy, did past bits actually come in clutch because as you can see, he stored 550 smart plating in this storage box. And yes, live stream bits was super happy when he saw that because oh boy, that would have took some time for that container to fill back up when if I have to turn all this back on. We'll do that in a minute. Wait a minute. <sighs> have I got have I got 500 smart plate plated stored somewhere? Oh no. No! I sunk them in like episode two. <laughs> episode, episode three. Damn it! Wait. Wait. <gasps> Wait a minute! Did I. Did I purposely store 500 in there? <laughs> when I set all this up before, I must have put 500 in here. <laughs> Oh my god! Oh, yep, yep, yep. I don't remember doing that. Yep. So, live stream bits is a bloody spoon. He's a bloody, bloody spoon. He can't get anything right. He's always doing dumb stuff. But oh boy. It's a good job I'm here, right? It's a good job I'm here. Otherwise, nothing will get done. We just put the smart plating in, versatile framework, and the automated wiring. Then we seal it, and yes, we're gonna bloody send it. And Bob's your uncle. <laughs> I get so many people are asking, like, what do you mean by Bob's your uncle? I don't know. You figure it out. Who knows what it means? <laughs> I love this goddamn machine. But before we move on to tier five and six, I'm gonna unlock hypertube. So let's send that off. And hopefully, editing bits has not showed you what we're gonna do with them. 
because we do it in every single playthrough. And now that we've got hyper tubes, let's unlock oil processes. We're going to get the oil extract to the refineries, valves, plastic, rubber, fuel, petroleum coke, circuit board, scanner update so we can scan for crude oil, new shop products. Yes, because now we can be able to get like coated concrete foundation, which is super shiny. So let's unlock this, but I need to get the items. God damn it. Items acquired and now I can unlock it. Can I? Did I miss anything? No, we got it. Okay, select the milestone and bada bing, bada bosh, put my items in there and it's time for oil, which means we have got some refineries, the oil extractors in production now and all that good stuff. One thing I do kind of want to work to next, because obviously uh, we do want to kind of get um, uh, alternate fluid transport so we can unlock package fuel, so we can get the package fuel recipe. Uh, I do want industri in industrial fluid buffers as well. This is a very important milestone right here. But I also want to unlock the uh, fuel generators. Otherwise, we're not going to be able to send the fuel anywhere right now unless we're going to storage and kind of sink it. So it's going to be a bit of a pain. But we need heavy modular frames and computers for that. And them two are going to wait till next episode. Well, especially the heavy modular frames. Because I have something kind of planned for it. Kind of which will involve this location and all six of these pure iron nodes and these three pure coal nodes and one normal node. And that is for another day because we need to challenge this area because we need the oil, the juicy oil. So I'm just going to place my foundation down. And yes, it's floating for now, but I don't know what scale under flooring we're going to do. But what I do know is if we put down a refinery, we have a look into here. We are going to use the heavy oil residue. And if you're not using this, you need to unlock it because it's the most vital piece and best alternate heavy oil residue recipe in the game. Because <laughs> as you can see, it requires 30 crude oil, outputs 40 heavy oil residue, but also outputs 20 resin, which as we know, resin is flexible because resin is made into plastic and rubber so you can choose whatever you want to do with them and as we know from our oil extractor that's on a pure node we crank that up like that to 300 cubic meters and then that will go into 10 refineries using the heavy oil residue best recipe in the game in my eyes so vital but you must be wondering like how have we fit all of these refineries into single pipes well if you do the math we're outputting 40 heavy oil residue and because we're only using mark one pipes means we have a capacity of 300 and if you do 300 divided by 40 is 7.5 so what i'm doing is i'm grabbing seven machines from this side putting it into one line seven machines from this side putting it into one line and yes the remaining three on that side and remaining three on that side merge together and make a six line going into this one so we've got one line here one line here and one line here which means the lines that are coming from up above is a 280 line and the one in the middle is a 240 line because this is obviously coming from, you know, six machines. Six times 40, 240, and then seven times 40 is 280. And just for those who don't know how refineries work, they are probably the... Uh, the next step in complication from your other machines. The reason being is that you have two outputs, which means if you uh, back up your plastic and it fills up the machine, it will stop outputting residue. I've seen some people saying, no, it will still work. That is not the case. If this plastic fills up in the machine, stops, it will stop this whole recipe from being made and your residue won't get made. So take that into consideration. So I've kind of gone with a three underflooring. I don't know if this is going to be enough. We might have to extend this just because of the pipes coming in and out here. Uh, and if I think about it, I do need to change it because if I grab myself a pipe and then bring you from there to there, it's going to do weird hickory dickory dock stuff. You see what I mean? So I can put that there, but then it's kind of going down and then back up again. I don't like that. But also what I'm going to do for the time being is I'm only going to put down the pure line. So one pure line is going to power one uh, one line of 10. And then the other pure line is going to power the other line of 10. I'm going to leave the normal for now uh, until we extend later on. Because to be honest, when I get all this powered, we're going to have a bit of a problem. Yes, we're running out of power again. Because for some reason in this playthrough, I'm deciding to kind of keep fighting power and in every episode i keep updating my coal plants and i don't really want to update my coal plants again because it's just another job and it's another day and it's just, yeah so give me 
bloody fuel generators. And for us to get fuel generators, I had to put down the oil extractors. And I put two down. They're both overclocked to uh, 250%, providing 300 cubic meters. One line going into the first 10, and then the other line going into the right-hand side 10. And the outputs have been merged together as well. Because as you know, we have 10 on this side, which send out 20, which then merge into a 200 line. And then this is, is the exact same. So this is where my resin's going to come from to make plastic. And this one, my, my resin's going to come from to make rubber. So, yeah, kind of getting things moving and getting things getting done. Hello, crates. What are you? Concrete. And you? More concrete. Oh, I've also added a little bit of a walkway down the centre here, um, which is kind of useful, especially when it comes to refineries and trying to avoid pipes and all that kind of stuff. And it just kind of makes somewhere for me to walk. So I don't know where this is going to go. This might extend onto more lines or what, but this is what we're working with right now. And as you know, I always bring the power lines through the floor and then straight into a connector on underneath. It does make them look clean and I kind of like it. And as you know, my rule of thumb, if it's stationary and it does not move, it's fine to clip. So after getting a little bit more work done, we have now added some refineries on this side. And as you can tell, this has got some water inputs. And that's because this is where the resin is going to come. And if you look in here, 60 polymer resin to 20 water equals 20 plastic. And we are making 200 resin on each line. So this line here is sending its resin to this machine, which, as you know, 60 times 30 is 180. So these three machines here are making plastic. But the reason I put them all next to each other is just to make it easier for the water, because that's only 60 water being consumed, meaning we've got 240 water spur. And this is where the rubber refineries come into play, because the rubber only requires 40 on the input and 40 water with a 20 rubber output. So 40 times by 5 is 200. That means 200 resin is required as well, which is perfect because, as we know, like I just said, a line of 10 sends out 200 resin, which is on the opposite side of these. So them ones over there, them ones. On the output side, I've got all of the uh, outputs to actually merge into one line. So that means plastic and rubber will be coming down the same line. But right here, I've got two storage containers. This one is saying, hey, Mr. Rubber, do you want to go to the left? Yes, that's where that goes. And then overflow is going to go forward. So plastic and any excess rubber, once this fills, will get sent forward. And as you can see right now, we've just got a bit of a resin. And if you've never seen resin, that's what it looks like. And then this smart splitter is saying to the plastic, hey, get your ass into that storage. And if you're full, we're going to overflow you to the right to get sunk by the iCrush 500. Don't believe me? Even got its name tattooed on itself. Yep, so the inevitable happened. We, uh, well, we hit the power limit. And as you can see, it kind of got shut down. Um, so what I've had to do is I've extended this coal line. And I believe this one will have to be extended in the future. Because right now, I need to focus on the task at hand, which is to increase. But we do have a maximum production rate now of uh, 5,100. And our max consumption is 4,226.3 megawatts. So hopefully if we connect that back up and then check my power line again, everything's going to boot back up and I'm expecting to see a quite a bit of a power spike and we can already see it happening now. So hopefully we don't go over 5,100 megawatts. Please be. So it seems like we're fine for now, uh, but I want you to kind of ignore the, the, like the, um, the rocket we've kind of done here um, because... I need all this residue fuel to keep being stored. And then every now and again, I've kind of connected these up and kind of just go into here, full pipe network, flush it. Removes all the, you know, the residue from the line. Uh, and the resin can keep moving and doing its thing so I can make plastic and rubber. Um, but I've also connected up the water extractor. And I kind of done something kind of cool here. Uh, is if we look at this. I've kind of just connected up and done the normal thing that we've been doing with the, you know, the conveyor belts by just placing the pipe on the on that. But then I kind of put the frame around it. And I actually did that in my tips and tricks video for episode five. So if you've not seen that, highly recommend checking that out. And we kind of put it in here. It just fits. Just. Oh, yeah. And that is um, overclocked to 300. Although it doesn't need to be 300 because I believe all of these is 200. 260, I believe. 40 times 5, 200. Four, uh, tw three times 20, 60. Yeah, 260. Quick maths, Bix. Bix, Bix, Bits. Jesus, I'm forgetting my own name. I'm going bloody nuts. I'm going bloody nuts. I play this game too much. Hey, that rhymed. 
And now it's time to get the best foundation in the bloody game. So we go into the awesome shop. We go over to foundations. We... Wait. We go over to customizer. <laughs> we then go into coated concrete foundation material. We're then going to purchase that. We're then going to go bada bing, bada bush. Wait. I thought I had some coupons on me. I guess not. So that means I've got to run all the way back home, back to the base, go inside my storage, grab my coupons. Look at all them bloody hard drives. Oh. For those that don't know, I'm actually spawning in my hard drives and my power shards because I play this game way too much. And I don't want to be spending time during the live streams to go exploring, to go and waste time on that whilst I could be building these episodes. Hence the reason they come out pretty quick with quite a lot of stuff inside of them. So that's not painted. Wait, eh, there we go. Oh my god, can't even do anything, this live stream bits. It's missing everything. I blame the chat. <laughs> so back into the shop and then bye. Now we bloody got it. So now if I go into here, go into my customizer, go to materials, I've now got coated concrete foundation and oh boy does this. Wait. Oh my god, I don't even have plastic. Jesus. Grab you and then paint you. And oh boy, look at it. When there's lights and everything, it just looks so shiny. I have an idea. Paint you just like that. And oh boy, it's screen space reflection orgasm. Look at it. It's so nice. I think I kind of like it like this. Oh my God, especially when you turn your torch off. I feel like the pink's a little bit overpowering. Any of you have ever watched that uh, YouTube way back in the day? I think it was Rooster Teeth. Was it Rooster Teeth? Red, ver red versus blue, but that's kind of pink. Ignore that. Red versus blue, you know, the halo little things. That, that was cool. That was cool. Okay, so as you can tell, the rocket that was over here has now been removed because I've added four foundations, four foundations, four refineries on that side, four refineries on that side, with the recipe of 60 heavy residue oil per minute on the input and 40 fuel on the output. So you must be wondering how we did this because obviously we got a 280 line, a 280 line and a 240 line. Well, the 280 line comes along here and goes into all four of them. But then you're like, wait, 60, 120, 180, that's 240. What are you going to do with that excess 40 residue that you sit in the line well i have you covered in the last refinery here i've overclocked it to 166.66667 which needs 100 input yes 100 so 100 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 280 60 120 180 plus 100 is 280 and that is exactly what we've done on that side as well but we're not going to talk about the outputs of this machine just yet because that's going to change just ignore it, all right? So I've kind of left this open gap here because I want to do something that we're going to need and one, it's going to be 100% more useful to build. And I wanted to progress the residue on a little bit to make fuel so I can get these to get stored instead. So there's a bit more of a longer waiting period and all that kind of stuff. And then this is going to go into storage, which I'm probably going to put underneath the building until we can utilize this. But I do want to utilize the fuel into package fuel because we're going to need that for the jetpack. And yes, I've unlocked alternate fluid transport and I've also unlocked industrial manufacturing, which means we now have the manufacturer. And for those that have never seen it, it's quite a hefty machine with four inputs and one output but we will use them soon tm what i want to do is i want to kind of just zoop this along here and just get these foundations moving and so we can you know get some constructors down and why we need constructors is because we're going to here we're going to need packaged canisters well empty canisters so we need plastic for that and as we know we are making how many plastic per minute i can't remember we're only making 60 it's a small amount of number so if we put down you know, two of these uh, side by side. So I'm probably going to put like like one like here and then one here. And then this is going to go, like I said, into canisters. And then this one's going to go into canisters. I don't know why I just didn't copy and paste. Uh, this one's going to go into canisters. 30 plastic into 60 empty canisters. And 60 empty canisters goes directly into our packager. So if you know, you know. Package fuel requires 40 fuel and 40 canisters wait my maths was totally off oh no that's because that's i normally that's because i normally overclock lol if i put that to 60 there we go so now that's 60 canisters 60 fuel and 60 package fuel that's why i was wrong ignore me so now we put another one of these right here just like this 
make sure we overclock this one but instead i'm just gonna grab this control c i don't i know before someone comments i don't i don't need to go into here to press control c i can do it from here and i can paste it from here i know i see that question get asked a lot and some of you keep forgetting i am quite a nerd at this game <laughs> okay you bloody spoons so a mark one on the input on the output like that so you're gonna go directly feed into there and then on this side i'm just gonna put down a conveyor hole into there into there then we're going to put down a lift because you're going to need 60 per minute. You're going to need 60 per minute. But then I also want my pipes going up into here. So more than likely what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab myself a, not a pipeline thing, a pipeline hole like this, like, like this, like, like that. Yeah, like that. And then I'm probably going to uh, just grab, oh, go into my customizer, first of all, right click on my swatch, change that to pipes. So whenever I put pipes down, it'll automatically change color. Bring this up here. Uh, and I'm just going to put that there, bring that up by bat, bat like that. I'm going to change that to uh, vertical, just like this, for now. And try to get up here. Oh, my God. And slide jump. Okay, perfect. And then I'm just going to bring that along here, like this. I know this is a bit more of an awkward way. Leave me alone. Everyone does it the way they want to do it. Wait, oh, my God. Can I? I'm going to put this down here now, aren't I? Put that there, just like that. Grab myself the pipe but why are you not going along there i swear i did this oh i bet you i need to move it one over don't i i like i'm having trouble with this after i've just said guys don't tell me about the copy and paste because i'm kind of a nerd at this game but i can't seem to do this apparently <laughs> okay that makes it better right i just kind of popped it in there we go you see what i tried to do just tried to put that to there and then i just tried to put the input on the inside of there but then i was extending it along there so i can put this extension going in but then i just kind of yeah, did that instead. Instead of me building it across. So, that is done. This now is powered. Wait. I'm sure I overclocked you. Oh, no. I underclocked these to 40. That was because it was better. Yeah. I underclocked these to 40 instead, which that means these only need 20 plastic. That one only needs 20 plastic. And then I have 20 going into the storage so I can actually store some. Otherwise, I won't be able to use any to make the, uh, the cool foundations. Or any other buildables I need to do. Because look how shiny the floors are. I feel like I'm having a deja vu. So yeah, now we've got package fuel going. Which, for package fuel, if we grab 67 of that. And you can see, I've grabbed a couple here. And we look in my inventory. I have no jetpack just yet. Because we need to go to the hub. Put the things we need in there. And then, bala bing, bala bosh. We now have the jetpack. Well, technically not yet. Because I need to make it. So we go into here, into the equipment hub. No, that's the man bits. Oh my God, you can't even give me the equipment hub. Where's the equipment? God damn it, production. Equipment, blah, blah, blah. You into there, grab you, and then, oh, body equipment, there it is. Jetpack, I need uh, circuit boards. And just for the sake of this, I wonder what that was then. And just for this video, I am just going to go into here. I am then gonna scroll down and look for circuit boards, and I'm just gonna handcraft 15. Because why the hell not? If I can get the jetpack by handcrafting 15 of these, I'm going to do it. So bada bing, bada bosh, after handcrafting them, we have now got, well, a jetpack, which will take 17, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bam. Going to here, jetpack acquired. We can now hover around and watch my hands flap away because that's what they do with a jetpack. <laughs> but now I want to kind of get over to the actual main base a little bit quicker. So I'm thinking we're going to put down a hyper cannon here and we're going to put a hyper cannon down in that base so we can just kind of fly over there and then land safely with our jetpack. So I did that. <laughs> I love the power of editing. How you can just go pop and then it was in, right? So if you want to know how to build these, because I wasn't going to show you how to do it. I've done a video on it before. I've done multiple videos. I'll even put a little thing up here in the top right hand corner. I don't know why I'm pointing IRL because I've got no webcam on right now. But I'll also put a link in the description if you want to know how these are built. So without further ado, let's jump in here, slide and jump. And then bada bing, bada bosh. We can fly all the way to the plastic and rubber plant and fuel plant and land safely. And you can see I've already put one down at this place so we can get back to the starter base. Whee! There we go. And then I can just go into here. You know, 
I love these things. So I think I'm going to implement this into some form of the, into the design of the build, but I don't know what design of the build I'm going to do unless, again, Editing Bits has already showed you, which more than likely he has because he likes to tease things. And just like that, we did it. So this took a long time. Like, I'm not going to lie, a long time. This whole section here that we did and you've seen in this video, we knew enough, built all this in one episode, well, in one day stream over on the Twitch channel. Um, but the whole building itself probably took around three days to actually build because I was coming up with multiple designs and all that kind of stuff. I did what I kind of did, but as of recording this, yes, blueprints are coming. So I'm super stoked for that because that means I can get the hyper cannon. I can pre-build that. I don't need to carry on building them anymore. I'm going to blueprint it. I'm also going to be putting like my lights, these kind of structures into a blueprint. I'm also going to do some other cool blueprint stuff. And yes, I will be releasing them to you guys. So you're welcome. And I think the best way for me to do it is if I use one of these in one of my builds, I will put the blueprint uh, in the Discord. I will be creating a specific Discord room for my blueprints. And if you want them, make sure you join the Discord. So go in the description, join the Discord, and I will be releasing them going from Tuesday onwards. Because on Tuesday's live stream, when I start at 5 p.m. GMT, I will be probably designing a lot and playing around with the blueprint so if you want to figure out how they work and all that kind of stuff come and join us oh it's raining but we did a cool ass thing with the signs down here and even bean is kind of mesmerized he kind of is looking at it he just keeps you know looking at the purple lights and stuff but this is super cool i kind of like it it's the first time i've ever kind of done this kind of design and yes from this kind of position it's kind of blinding but yeah, I put these corners right here and uh, I didn't want to utilize these before because it was very buggy and I've just got some eight meter ramps going down here. But yeah, don't look too close into this because um, I might be flashbanging you right now. And if you're led in bed when while watching this on your tablet or your phone, you're probably lighting up like a Christmas tree right now. But god damn, you look good. So yeah, like I said, if you want to know how I designed this whole building, make sure to check out my second channel where you'll be able to see all of this built in step by steps because technically at the end of the day it's super simple all i'm doing is just placing windows down at half points through the foundation building a wall up and then can oh i'm not i've even unfinished it but we brought the hyper cannon up to this level as well um so if we go underneath here i've put the hyper cannon up on top of these things and i've added lights down here so look we can actually change the lights in the building now and all that kind of stuff and yeah i think it's pretty cool we kind of went for the blue and purple just because it's kind of like streamer colors right has snut says blue and purple are streamer colors every stream you go into they more than likely got blue and purple lights but yep we got the hyper cannon up it goes through the wall here and takes us straight over to the main base so without further ado thank you so much for watching check out my other content right here and yes i will see you either over on the twitch or in another youtube video so keep smiling and i'll see you then God, make sure I'm going to go too far here. Oh, there we go. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're fine. We're fine. We're fine. Keep smiling. I'll see you then.